Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about all my film cameras. Let's start out with the point and shoot cameras. So first of all, I have here this little guy. This is the Minolta Freedom Zoom 115. Uh, this is a camera that I got right when I was getting into film photography and I was kind of amazed with how many really cheap point and shoots you could buy. Like you could walk into Goodwill and there would just be a bin full of the things. And I was like, you know, I had just discovered film. I was like, oh my gosh, all these cameras, they're so cheap. So looking for really good film point and shoots had kind of become like a hobby of mine at the time and like trying them out. And this is the one that I probably like the most and that I ultimately decided to keep around in my collection. So this has actually pretty decent zoom. I'm a fan of the zoom, surprisingly. I don't, I don't know. A lot of point and shoot cameras, I don't think the zoom is very good and I never use it. But on this one, I actually, I've taken zoom pictures and I've been happy with them. So for me, another good feature of this camera is that it has autofocus. So... This camera hits the autofocus most of the time. There are some times when I've taken a picture and it's been kind of a busy scene and the camera gets confused and it focuses on the wrong thing. But I would say probably 70% of the time, 80% of the time, 85% of the time, it gets it right. So that's good enough for me. I keep this camera around because, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of beat up. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a camera that I will literally just throw in my bag any bag that I'm taking with me anywhere. It's so small that it fits in like a little purse, but it also fits in backpacks, carry-ons, of course, whatever. So this thing can survive a fair amount of beating. So this is like the camera that I'm like, never leave home without a camera. Just don't do it. Um, and I was trying to reduce my dependence on always taking iPhone pictures because, I don't know, there's just iPhone pictures are not like that good quality, but they're also not film. So it was like, what am I getting out of this? I'm getting nothing. So this is the camera that I'll just throw in my bag anytime I'm going anywhere. It's really easy to take. Just load it up. You can't change the ISO. Look, there's like no settings that you can change on this thing. You can control the flash. I like that you can control the flash. I really do, but that's like it. That's the only setting they give you. So, but you know what? Sometimes there's a certain beauty to having that in a point and shoot when what you're going to get back out of this camera really is a mystery until it comes back from the lab. So, My next point and shoot is something a little more unique. It is the Olympus Pen EE. So this is a half frame camera. For those of you who might not know what a half frame camera is, it takes, so if you have one 35 millimeter frame, it takes a picture on half of that. So it's like port, two portrait oriented frames in one landscape oriented 35 millimeter frame. So it's half of a frame, half frame, yeah. That means you get 72 shots out of a 36 exposure roll, which is great. It allows you to shoot with abandon. You're like, I see something cool, snap, picture time. Um, but the downside of that is the negatives for each individual frame are very tiny. So, if you are trying to make a print of those, eh, no, don't make it too big. Um, <laughs> just being realistic with the size of your negatives. Even a drum scan isn't going to do that much for you here. Another downside is if you're sending it into a lab, some labs will charge you a lot of money for those scans. If you can scan your film yourself, if that's something that you do, it really doesn't make a difference. You just get more pictures. It can be a good way to explore composition. Um, Explore anything really because you have so many frames on one roll But some labs will charge you significantly extra to scan those teeny teeny tiny frames So just something to keep in mind um, One more cool thing about this camera is the light meter So this big circle around the lens here this thing this thing. Yeah Is the light meter. It's a selenium cell which basically means it doesn't need batteries um, This will meter for you. It's fully automatic. You just select the film speed and then, you know, pop the shutter button, advance the film. Pretty simple. Pretty fun though. Next up, I'm going to talk about range finders. This big boy <laughs> is the only range finder I have. Um, it's actually a medium format camera. It is the Mamiya 6 folding camera. So I got, this was like my first real medium format camera. I owned a Holga. I don't think that counts. So 
this is actually this camera is very new to me so I'm sure you'll be seeing more content about it and from it in the future but some cool features so you can it's foldable so if you press really hard on this button or if you're not weak like me you can pop the lens down um, and it folds back up really easily just like that so the compact size of this camera makes it really nice to just throw in a bag are you sensing a theme here I'm sensing a theme here um, I'm a busy person and I like to take cameras with me everywhere I go and I can't always take a camera bag and my backpack. I'm a college student and I can't always be walking around with like five bags. So I like cameras that are really easy to just take with me. This is my, yeah, so medium format is something that's new to me but something that I'm excited about. Um, range finders are something that's new to me. This is my first range finder that I've ever had, my only range finder that I have. Um, Definitely a different focusing mechanism, but one that I find really interesting. Um, it's a cool camera. I like it. I like. I've shot only one roll with it so far, so you know there's more to come in the future. See my opinions on it, but so far I have to say I'm a fan. All right, finally we're going to be talking about SLRs. So let's start with this guy over here. This is a Nikon EM. And I kind of feel like this is like the unloved stepchild of the old Nikon family. I don't know. You see a lot of pictures of someone's Nikon F or their Nikon FM um, or even their FE, but you don't see the EM. And I'm thinking that's because this is a pretty solid entry level camera. I got this camera because it's a Nikon and it was, I think the camera body was 20 bucks. So yeah. <laughs> If, if you could get a Nikon for 20 bucks. It has that nice classic vintage look. It's a metal body. It, um, is, it is truly the vintage film camera experience. But it's also, it is an entry level camera. It only shoots an aperture priority. The reason I got it is because it's an icon and so therefore I'm shooting this on a digital Nikon camera that you can't see. But all of my glass, all of my old Nikon glass that I was buying for this camera can also be used on my digital camera. So I was in a position to start accumulating lenses for my digital camera around the time I bought this. And that was very appealing to me because I didn't really want to sink money into two different sets of lenses. Um, again, broke college student. At the time I was actually a broke high school student. Alright, last camera that we're going to look at today is my first camera actually. This was my parents camera which means I got it for free. It's a Minolta Maxim XDSI. They were also like, why do you want a film camera? It's the 21st century. Why do you want a film camera? <laughs> and I was like, it's free. Stop, stop judging me. <laughs> so this is a film, my first film camera. Um, this is the camera that was used to take my baby pictures. So, you know, sentimental value. But it's a surprisingly a very good camera. So I believe this was Minolta's amateur entry-level SLR at the time. It has a lot of features. You can shoot in manual, shutter priority, aperture priority, or several different program modes. It gives you that flexibility. It's the only film camera I have that gives you like full control. So you have the option of being like really granular, really getting into the weeds, doing full manual control, spot metering everything. Or you can say, hey, you know, I'm taking pictures of my cousins and they're running around and these are family memories. Um, so I'm just going to shoot in full auto. The glass that I have for it isn't amazing. I have this kit lens for my parents. I have a telephoto lens for my parents. The only lens that I've bought myself for this camera so far is a 50mm 1.7, which is full autofocus. I did not notice that when I bought it. I was like, autofocus, that's great. I didn't realize that it was only autofocus. Um, I would say don't buy an only autofocus lens. That's the lesson that I've learned from this experience. It's a really good lens. Like the quality of the lens is really good. It's a it's a Konica lens, I think. Um, and it takes beautiful pictures, but sometimes it just does not get the focus. And you're standing there like staring at something, and you're just like going like this, and you're like just keep pressing this button to try and get its focus, and you look like a crazy person. And I am not here to look like a crazy person. I mean, if someone noticed that this was a film camera, they might already become a crazy person, but. You know, that's that's the kind of craziness that I'm willing to accept. Film camera crazy? Sure. Person who buys an autofocus lens crazy? No. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a lot of fun sharing my cameras with you. Um, and you know what? Hopefully I'll see you around here sometime soon. Thank you. <laughs>